Hi everyone, I'd like to take this opportunity to talk to you about quite a unique range that we've developed here at NTS. I think we were the first in the world to recognise, or amongst the first in the world, to recognise the potential of micronising minerals to dramatically increase their availability. Now, we call this range the MMS, it stands for Micronised Mineral Suspensions. So we take these materials, and it could be lime or guano or do dolomite or gypsum, and we micronise them down to this tiny, tiny particle size, just five micron average. And five microns actually available through the leaf or through the roots very, very rapidly. So we've really dramatically increased the availability of those minerals. And it came about this idea of this concept um, when we recognise this concept of the big four, I've talked about it before when we're doing leaf tests, this finding that if you can maximise four minerals at luxury levels on a leaf test, so calcium, the ideal might be 0.4 to 0.6, we want 0.6, that's a luxury level. Boron might be 12 to 70, we want 70, that's a luxury level. So what are the big four? And what we find if we maximise these four minerals, this wonderful outcome. But let's talk about them. Calcium, magnesium, phosphorus. And they're quite a, obvious because they're fairly major minerals. But the surprise package is boron. And boron is the fourth. You'd think it would be potassium. You'd think it would be nitrogen. But boron is the player. And boron's got a whole range of roles. But in this critical, critically important here is that boron is a calcium synergist. Calcium being so important and calcium not really working in the absence of boron, so boron very important. And, and magnesium is a phosphorus synergist, so we've got a pair of synergists, all, of, all four of this quartet are intimately involved in this most important process of photosynthesis. So we, what we found was that we'd look at a tissue test, say in a vegetable or fruit growing scenario, and almost always you need more calcium or you need more magnesium to have that luxury level that we're seeking to maximise yield and maximise crop resilience. And, and then you look at other things on that test and you find that you've got high levels, for example, of nitrates, very common in intensive agriculture or intensive horticulture to have overdone nitrate nitrogen. So then you say, well, what have I got for calcium? Well, you've got calcium nitrate. Uh, and then very commonly we, we have high levels of sulfur in that scenario and we say, okay, we need magnesium to make that at luxury levels. What do we got? We've got magnesium sulfate, we've got magnesium nitrate, we've got high sulfates, we've got high nitrates. How do we play the four, big four strategy? How do we adopt that strategy when we don't have inputs to do it? And we said, well, what would happen if we took lime and we micronized it and then we held it in suspension with certain gums, and that's why it's called a micronized mineral suspension, and then we foliar sprayed or fertigated or liquid inject uh, that. And we found that we could get 1.1 kilos of lime, micronized lime, into one litre. That makes it very, very heavy. I mean, it's, it's a really heavy container. Uh, and of course, they come in much bigger containers than this. But we can't do 20 litres because it's too hard on people's backs. So we just do 15 litre containers because of that weight. But 1.1 kilos in a litre is 44% calcium. Now, we're talking about lifting this all-important mineral. We're talking about calcium nitrate at 17, 18% nitrogen compared to 44%. And we don't have any unwanted tag on, so we can play how do you lift calcium to put it into the luxury zone. We fertigate or foliar spray some lime life. How do we address magnesium? Well, magnesium sulfate is 10% magnesium, and often we've got too much sulfur, so it's not applicable, or too much nitrate, which is also about 10% magnesium nitrate. So what happens if we take magnesite, magnesium carbonate, 28% magnesium, micronize that, and put it into a liquid format. Now we've got a super concentrate magnesium with no unwanted tag-ons to lift the magnesium levels. We can do it together with something like micronized guano, it's called Calmag Life, sorry, not guano, micronized dolomite, which is called Calmag Life, and we can lift calcium and magnesium together. And when we come to phosphorus, how are we going to address that? Well, a popular technique is using something called phoslife, which is micronized guano in a concentrated form. And so, so we've got the, the, the analysis of guano, you know, with 12% or whatever of phosphorus. We've got this nice kick of calcium, 28%, and we've got a significant portion of trace minerals and silica and so forth in that liquid. Very, very popular because Typically, it's a huge, it's kind of a holy grail to have calcium and phosphorus working together. They, and you can't put them together because they form calcium phosphate. But when you're not in an ionic form, you've got the immediate benefit of those two key minerals that really drive growth 
Uh, and so people love, particularly organic growers, but growers across the globe have utilised the concept of micronized guano as phospholife or even just as, as the micronized powder, which is called phospholife superactive. So that's, that's phospholife that we're talking about in, this, in, in that instance. Um, Phospholife, calcium and phosphorus together, and this rare combination of those two minerals and all the trace minerals that come with it. Then we can look at um, other options, like you've got, say, a tight, closed soil, and it's all important to get oxygen in and CO2 out. It's called gas exchange, and you know it can be too expensive in a broad acre scenario to apply two or three tons of gypsum. And so you can use micronized gypsum, very, very effective, just to affect the root zone. You can put it through liquid inject, you can fertigate it, and it will open up that root zone to allow that root zone to breathe. You know, gypsum, of course, creates that removal of forms, you know, magnesium sulfate. It ionizes the calcium sulfur break apart, and that happens more rapidly in that very, very fine form. And you form magnesium sulfate, you form sodium sulfate, magnesium and sodium being the two things that tighten and close the soil. And gypsum is called the clay breaker because it forms sodium sulfate, magnesium sulfate, which leach out of that soil and change the soil structure. Well, you're doing this just in the root zone when you use gyp life, which is micronized gypsum, right into the root zone, opening up and getting that root zone breathing. And that's so important to get that oxygen in and that CO2 out more efficiently. Ma managing gas exchange in the root zone with micronized liquid gypsum called gyp life. Uh, and finally, in that blend, and it's quite important because we've talked at length about how important silica is in the equation, this new recognition that silica uh, is this neglected mineral that has such an impact on cell strength to give you resilience and less need for chemicals upon immune elicitation, upon stem strength, upon a translocation of nutrients because it builds phloem and xylem, which is made from silica. So we've got this whole understanding, new understanding really of silica and basically the most common form foliar sprayed is potassium silicate. Now, the problem with potassium silicate is that it's incompatible with almost everything. And farmers don't want to go out and put one thing out there. They want to pump a few things into the tank. And there's not many things you can put with potassium silicate. And what we found is if we take diatomaceous earth, which is basically like gypsum, it's, it's, it's a mined mineral from thousands of these tiny creatures called diatoms who were entombed by geological upheavals and died, and all that's left is their outer skeleton, and it just looks like a cream-colored powder, but that it's just filled with the outer skeleton, which is 85% silica. And so we find if we take that and micronize it, same story, down to five microns, um, you've got this wonderful source of plant available silica that you can combine with anything. So you can put it out through, you know, you can put it out as a folder, you can put it out through liquid inject, you can put it out through fertigation with anything that you want to add with it. There's nothing that it's incompatible with. And that makes silica fertilization so much more versatile and so much more user friendly. So it's become a really popular product across the world for us, this product called Dialife that can be used with anything to deliver silica nutrition. So I think that pretty much wraps up the micronized mineral suspension story. But if you've not played around with it, have a little bit of a trial on, on a patch on the farm and see for yourself what's possible. Thanks for listening.